A very good evening. Thank you for joining us. You're watching the Pravahi News. A very good evening to you. I'm Sharifa Tahir. And I'm Ashika Minadeen. First, we take a look at today's headlines. Several large development projects in the Hambantara district vested with the people. Britain emphasizes that member countries should not boycott the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting. Optimism expressed about the Indian Prime Minister's attendance at Chogam. Channel NTV of National Rupavani begins telecasting under a new format. A strong typhoon hits the Philippines. A look at those and other stories in detail. The 14-story Sairupaya new administration building complex of the Ruhunu Magampura Mahinda Rajapaksha Harbour was declared open this morning under the patronage of President Mahinda Rajapaksha. This is the tallest building in the Hambantara district. It has a floor space of 100,000 square feet and it has been constructed at a cost of 1,000 million rupees. This building complex will provide banking, supply and documentation facilities required for shipping purposes under one roof. By end of October this year, 139 vehicle transporting ships called in at the Hambantara port. 38,000 vehicles from these vessels were transshipped. 28,500 vessels were imported to Sri Lanka through this harbour. This is another step of making Sri Lanka a naval hub in Asia. Sri Lanka's first computer manufacturing institution was declared open this morning at the Information Technology Village of Surya Baba in Hambantata under the patronage of President Mahinda Rajapaksha. 200 million rupees has been spent for this establishment of this institution. The institution has been established as a first step of the national objective of making Sri Lanka the technology hub of Asia. Mahinda Chintana stipulates that a future generation that could win the blue skies, the seas, the cyberspace will be formed. The institution has been established by the EW Information System Elias EWIS Institution in collaboration with the computer magnets of the United States, China and Taiwan. The manufacturing unit will assemble 20,000 desktop computers and 5,000 laptop computers each month. This institution is ISO certified and it will provide direct and indirect employment opportunities to a large number of youths in the area. The theme of the project is our own computers for us. In recognition of the vesting of this computer manufacturing institute with the people of this country, a postage stamp and a first aid cover were also issued. Ministers Ranjit Siembala Pitya, Bandula Gunavardhana, Rajit Sena Ratna, Lakshman Yapa Abhivardhana, Mahinda Amravira and Chief Ministers Sarath Ekanayaka and Shashindra Rajapaksha, Parliamentarian Sajin Divas Gunavardhana and Namal Rajapaksha and the Chairman of the Airways Institution Sanjeeva Vikramanayaka and several others attended the function. Meanwhile, on a similar note, construction work on several large development projects in the Hambandar district is complete. These projects were visited with the people under the patronage of President Mahinda Rajapaksa recently. Here is a short report on these projects. The Ronug Magampur International Conference Centre was visited with the people yesterday. This is the second international conference centre for Sri Lanka and it is situated in a land area of 28 acres. The centre has all modern technical facilities required for a conference venue. The main hall has a seating capacity of 1,500 persons. In addition to this, there are three sub-conference halls with a seating capacity of 250 persons each. There are 10 committee meeting halls as well. The centre has a parking area for 800 vehicles and it also has a helipad. The President also visited with the people the flyover at Siribopura Junction on the Matara Hambantara Villawaya Road. The flyover was constructed at a cost of 2,617 million rupees. The interchange at the Mirija Villa Junction on Matara Villawaya Main Road was also declared open yesterday. The 200 million rupees was spent on this project. The President also declared open the Divisional Secretariat Office complex at Virakatya constructed at a cost of 45 million rupees. The Virakatya Pradesh Sabha building complex was also visited with the people. The complex has an auditorium and a library. The government spent 50 million rupees for the construction of this complex. 
Meanwhile, the new botanical garden at Meridia Villa was also visited with the people yesterday. This is the first and the largest dry zone botanical garden in Sri Lanka and it has a land area of 300 acres. Continue with more local stories prior to the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting. Other related conferences of the Commonwealth will start on the 10th of this month. These activities will be held in Colombo, Hambantote, Gaul and Hikadua. <laughs> The theme of this year's summit is Equity and Sustainable Development with Progress. The Sri Lanka's national flower, the Blue Marnel flower, is symbolized with the official logo of the summit. The Youth Conference, the Business Forum and the People's Forum will be held prior to the summit. The Youth Forum will be held from the 10th to the 14th of this month and it will be inaugurated by President Mahindra Rajapaksha at the Ruhunu Magampara International Conference Center and 106 representatives from 53 countries will attend this forum. The People's Forum will be held at Hikkadua from the 10th to the 13th of this month. Many civil organizations will attend this forum. The Commonwealth Business Forum will be held at the Cinnamon Grand Hotel from the 12th to the 14th. Several leading businessmen and investors of the world are scheduled to attend this forum. They include representatives from around 15 non-Commonwealth countries. The Commonwealth has a government meeting will end on the 17th of this month. The final declaration of the summit will be announced on this day. The conclusion of the summit will be announced under the patronage of President Mahinda Rajapaksha at the PMICH. And staying on the news of Choga, we now bring you a country profile for today from the Commonwealth. And today our focus is on Kenya. <laughs> The Republic of Kenya is a sovereign state in Africa. Its capital and largest city is Nairobi. Kenya lies on the equator with the Indian Ocean to the southeast, Tanzania to the south, Uganda to the west, South Sudan to the northwest, Ethiopia to the north and Somalia to the northeast. Kenya covers 581,309 square kilometers and has a population of about 44 million. The country is named after Mount Kenya, the second highest mountain in Africa. The country has a warm and humid climate. Kenya is famous for its safaris and diverse wildlife reserves and national parks. Official language in the country is Swahili. The currency used in the country is Kenyan shilling. The economy of Kenya is the largest by GDP in East and Central Africa. Agriculture is a major employer and the country traditionally exports tea and coffee and more recently fresh flowers to Europe. Kenya is a presidential representative democratic republic. The head of government and president of Kenya is Uhuru Kenyatta. Kenya obtained membership in the Commonwealth in 1963. More with regards to the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting, Britain has emphasized that the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting in Sri Lanka should not be boycotted. The British Foreign Secretary William Hague has said that he and the British Prime Minister David Cameron would certainly attend the meeting. The British Foreign Secretary has made the revelation in an interview with the British newspaper The Telegraph recently. He has said that attending the Shogun meeting is the right decision and nothing can be achieved by boycotting it. He has said that the violence and the bloodshed in Sri Lanka due to Tiger terrorist activities cannot be forgotten by anyone. The British Foreign Secretary has pointed out that after defeating the terrorists, Sri Lanka has achieved rapid progress in resettlement of displaced people in the north and east, development of infrastructure facilities, demining and rehabilitation and socialization of the former LTTE cadres. 
Both the British Prime Minister and the Foreign Secretary are planning to make a visit to the northern province upon arrival in Sri Lanka. Mr. Haig has also stated that by attending the summit opportunities will arise to have honest discussions with the Sri Lankan government. Meanwhile, Indian media have expressed optimism about Indian Prime Minister Dr. Manmohan Singh's participation in the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting. The Indian Premier's decision in this regard is to be announced within the next few days. It is believed that Dr. Manmohan Singh will arrive in Sri Lanka on the 14th of this month. Indian security units have already made a pre-security survey on the locations to be visited by the Indian Premier during his visit to Sri Lanka. He is also expected to visit the northern province. Indian media has also reported that during his visit, the Indian Prime Minister is planning to have a discussion with the Chief Minister of the Northern Province, C. V. Vigneswaran. The renovated Ratmalana Airport in Colombo has been declared open prior to the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting. A function in this connection was held today under the patronage of President Mahindra Rajapaksha. The Colombo Ratmalana Airport was constructed in 1934 under a proposal adopted at the State Council. The first aircraft was landed in this airport on the 27th of November 1935. The airport was being used for domestic air services and has been renovated after 78 years. There are two terminals named Special and Very Special Terminals. The Immigration and Emigration and Custom Activities has also been expanded at the airport. It can be used for business flights directly. Facilities have also been created for landing small aircrafts and keep them parked there. The runway has also been renovated and modern technical and communication facilities have also been provided. The chairman of the airport and air services company, Prasanna Vikramasurya, said that the airport will be opened as an air services control center. He said that it is from this airport that the air services will be controlled and this airport will become a very important airport. He said that the resting rooms in the VIP terminal building have also been renovated to a very high level. The Minister of Civil Air Services, Priyanka Rajaratne, Deputy Minister Geetanjana Gunavardhana, Parliamentarians Namal Rajapaksha and Lohan Ratwatta, the Chief Minister of Uva Province, Shashindra Rajapaksha and several others attended the function. We continue with more news here at home. The new pinnacle of the Sella Kataragama historical Vatarua Raja Mahaviharaya was unveiled yesterday. The Pinkam ceremony was held under the patronage of President Mahinda Rajapaksha. The Chaitya is 72 feet tall and its circumference is 132 feet. The Chaitya had been completely constructed with a special kind of gold-plated stones called golden glass mosaic brought from Thailand. The Chudamanikya brought from the Czech Republic has been deposited on the gold-plated pinnacle structure. The President also switched on the decorated lights around the Chaitya. The Pinkam ceremony was held under the leadership of the Chief Incumbent of the Sithal Power Raja Mahaviharya, Venerable Mataramba Himarathana Naikatera. Several members of the Mahasangha, including the Chief Incumbent of the Viharaya, Venerable Denagama Dhammaratanathera, several ministers and parliamentarians and the Chief of the Presidential Staff, Kamini Senarath, also participated in the Pinkam ceremony. The Acting Chief Incumbent of the Kirivahara Raja Mahaviharaya, Venerable Polamarue Vakishwarathera, addressed the gathering. The Venerable Terra said that the people of this country for the whole period of his life is subjected to the reactionary and backward thinking. It was the President that changed the situation and liberated the people towards progressive thinking through his Mahinda Chintana. He said that by molding the future generation as a virtuous society, many things can be won in the future and similarly develops the country for the benefit of the posterity. Channel N NTV of Sri Lanka Rupavani Corporation has been launched under a new format. A function in this connection was held today under the patronage of Minister of Mass Media and Information, Kelly Ramakwella. Channel NTV began on the 18th of November 2009 to broadcast programs in English. Several feature programs in the English language will be broadcast through this channel in line with the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting. Several programs are scheduled to be produced targeting local business communities and the diplomatic and tourist segments. Channel NTV can be viewed from 5 a.m. to 10 p.m. on UHF 39. Minister Kelly Rambukwalla participating in the launch function said that Sri Lanka Rupavani Corporation will become successful in making Channel NTV the main English medium TV channel in the country.
He said that the English channel of Nashur Rupavahini is a very special one because Nashur Rupavahini cannot broadcast programs only in Sinhala and Tamil language. Nashur Rupavahini cannot also use English language, which is the business language of the country as a link language. It must go beyond it and have an exclusive English channel. The chairman of Sri Lanka Broadcasting Corporation, Hudson Samarasinghe, director general of Sri Lanka Rupavahini Corporation, Chandrapal Alinege, and senior management officials and staff of Nashur Rupavahini also attended the function. The Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting will start in seven days from today. The Commonwealth Media Centre informed that all arrangements have been made to broadcast the proceedings of the Shogun around the world. 200 media personnel qualified for covering Shogun activities received their accreditation cards today. The issue of accreditation cards started at the Galabari Hotel today at 10 a.m. 535 local media personnel and 354 media personnel have registered themselves for covering the Shogun activities. Further details in this connection can be obtained by surfing the website www.shogun2013.lk. The police informed that laws relating to banning displays of various labels and slogans on the front mirror of vehicles will be strictly enforced. Police media spokesman, senior police superintendent Ajit Rohana said that this decision will be enforced with effect from the first of this month. This ruling was announced through Special Gazette in the year 2000 by the Minister of Transport in accordance with the Clause 237 of the Motor Vehicle Transport Act. But due to violation of this rule frequently by vehicle drivers, the number of accidents has also increased. In future, this rule will be strictly enforced. Included in the ban is for passenger transport buses to affix the destination of the buses on the front glass. Pasting labels such as VIP or VVIP in the professional labels in the front mirror of the vehicles is also prohibited. Only the vehicle registration number and the photocopy of the registration license are permitted to be pasted on the front mirror. Police media spokesman, senior superintendent of police Ajit Rohan has said that pasting of stickers on the front mirror has contributed to many accidents in the recent past. Drivers are unable to identify pedestrians due to the stickers. He said that police request vehicle owners and drivers to remove all such stickers and steps will be taken in future to file legal action against the owners and drivers of vehicles who keep the front mirror of their vehicles covered with stickers. And in the meantime, the Paddy Marketing Board informed that the arrears of 300 million rupees for the paddy purchase from the farmers during the Yala season have been settled. On an instruction given by Minister Johnston Fernando to the chairman of the Paddy Marketing Board, these arrears have been settled. The farmers of Polanarua, Ampara and Habmanthara districts received the area's payments. The Paddy Marketing Board purchased 94,376 metric tons of paddy during the Yala season. The board spent more than 30,050 million rupees for this purpose. It purchased 30,000 metric tons of paddy from the Ampara district. The chairman of the Paddy Marketing Board, K.B. Jayasinghe, said that the board also purchased large stocks of paddy from Polanarua and Habmanthara districts as well. The Biffy's Big Sri Lanka 2013 walk held under the leadership of former England Test cricketer Sir Ian Botham has ended. The objective of the walk was to collect contributions to establish a fund to develop sports among northern youth. The walk began from Kilinochi on the 1st of this month. After eight days, it ended today at Sinigama near Gaul. Today's walk began from Gaul. A large number of students and sports enthusiasts participated in the procession. At Sinigama, the walk was warmly welcomed by the Gunajaya Satata Foundation of Sinigama, and it ended at the and it ended at the premises of the Vimala Buddhi Vidyalaya of Sinigama. Sir Ian Botham and his spouse Mathaya Murlidharan, Alan Border, Steve Waugh, and several other internationally reputed cricketers attended the final event. There was also a cultural pageant held in Sinigama in this connection. Mutaya Murlidharan presented a special memento to Sir Ian Botham. Meanwhile, still on local news, the Arabum Dakma musical pageant organized in connection with the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting is being held at the public grounds in Gatambe. It can be viewed live on Nashur Pavani from 10 10 pm today. Flashback Ritmaratavata, Veriliad, Uresha, Shashika, 
Chandra Sena, Ishak Adulu, Supiri Taru Gita Vatwana Ayuru Advinin, Rambar Atta, Mahan Ura Ketabe Kridanganeta Rokwan, Kuturaja Mandali, Rajanai Kasamulu, Lovak Hamuana Rata. It's now time to take a look at sports. The Kenza International Karate Championship was held recently in Gaul. The championship was won by the Kenzo Karate Association. The tournament was held at Gaul Town Hall. About 600 karate cars from 24 karate associations participated in the championship. The competitions were held under seven groups beginning from those aged four years and above. The runners-up in the tournament was Cherry's Shotokan International Karate Association. Third place was won by Gitsan Karate Shai Kokai International Association. <laughs> And for more on sports, the Soyuz spacecraft carrying the Olympic torch reached the International Space Center. The spacecraft is manned with three astronauts. The spacecraft took five hours to travel from Kazakhstan to the Space Center. The torch was carried by Michael Tyrion of the 38th Space Survey Team. He handed, uh, handed it over to the commanding officer of the 37th Space Survey Team. The astronauts are scheduled to travel to space tomorrow with the Olympic torch. Earlier, the Olympic torch has been carried in the space in the years of 1996 and 2000. The torch will be brought back to the Earth's surface next Wednesday. An enthusiastic cheer in there with uh, Fyodor, your chicken now holding the Olympic torch that was uh, brought up as part of the Olympic relay that began last month in Greece and ultimately will lead the torch to the Winter Olympics in Sochi, Russia in February. And with that note, we end tonight's built-in. Thank you very much for joining us. Stay tuned for more tomorrow. Good night. Good night.